5498267. Please update your name. <laughs> I'm totally joking. Uh, girl.biz, CEO underscore Rigo, Kim. All right, we're watching this guy live. He's going to talk about Revelation 20. Girl96, devil is a liar. Amen. Yeah, he's got a million subscribers. Yeah, so, bound for a thousand years. Devil don't take days off, and neither should we. The devil knows scripture, so should we. One of the things wow. that breaks my heart is the level of Bible illiteracy that is taking place. And I, this isn't meant to shame or condemn. I, too, am Bible illiterate. But I am trying to do something about that by devoting time, energy, effort. Time, energy, and effort to knowing more about this word allowing this thing right, to let's see how long until he quotes something from time, the Bible. energy and effort it breaks my heart to know that so many people aren't spending time in their word they think it's a waste of time they think that it's boring but then they wonder why they're discouraged and they're beat down and they have no victory and they don't know who they are and they're wrestling with their identity and they're wrestling with their worth and their value not knowing that you are a beloved child of god with power and authority boldly go before the throne because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You don't know the power that you have at your fingertips. If any of you guys ever, uh, you know, gotten something, I'm trying to think of something like a universal remote control, for instance. You know, one of my favorite movies is Click with Adam Sandler. And I'm going to get back to the scripture, but you think about a universal remote control, you get wow. in, it, it, it there's a lot of buttons and there's a lot of things that it can do, but you'll never understand what it has the power to do until you actually read the manual. I've had these universal remote controls and I'm looking at it and there's thousands of buttons, right? Not thousands, there's hundreds of buttons, maybe not hundreds, there's you know dozens of buttons on this control and it has the power to control every television in your home, man. Some of these you you know, universal remotes can control For your many stereo. Shall come in my yes, name saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, these things, but you and have shall no deceive idea the power many. That it actually has until you open up the manual and get an understanding. Oh man, if I type in this, this guy's, code, I'm going to this guy's talking this, live. This and this. Just in case and so many you're confused, this so guy's doing a live video right now word, on this Revelation 20. They have no idea the power that they have within them. They don't understand the, the, the image that they were made. They were made in the image of God. Uh, we, we are handcrafted. He, and he's using Hollywood we movies. We have the power to overcome. We have the power to tear down. As an example of whatever he's trying to above teach. And not below. We, the power in us is greater than the power in this world. But we live defeated because we have no idea of who so he talks. Are. He's a good talker. Crisis that's taking place around the world. And Christians are walking and the boldness that they've been given. You're operating on like 2%, 3%. You haven't even opened to the fullness. Now he's guilting people. And wonder why you live beat down and under the thumb of the devil when he is a liar and a deceiver and an unnamed angel comes, binds him up and locks him away for a thousand years. Not even the top dogs. So the saints reign with Christ a thousand years. Um, after he sees this angel bind up Satan, lock him away, um, he saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. And then he sees the souls of those who had been beheaded. Another word for beheaded is executed. The word is actually translated as executed. So there those who were executed he doesn't believe the name of Jesus, the Bible that he uh, for their holds witness. in his hand, he's going, although the word translated, inferring implying that the Bible that you hold in your hands is not the Word of God. Action for standing for Jesus. Those who did not receive his mark on their hands and they lived and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Um, and the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Uh, verse 7 says, when the thousand years were over, Satan will be released from his prison. He's going to go out and deceive the nation. So there's this thousand years where Jesus sits on the throne and reigns and rules. Uh, people will have that's, a decision. Uh, that's actually not in Revelation 20. They're going to follow Jesus 
outwardly, but inwardly they can still not uh, make that choice. So when Satan's released, he gathers all of those who are rebellious and are Jesus all of those does not who are reign Jesus, a thousand years. He does not reign and rule a thousand years. Left over after the tribulation period, and this kind of smashes the idea that. Well, if I lived, if, if everything was perfect and good, then there, like, if I'm just a good person, why do I need Jesus? Why Jesus do I need reigns faith? forever. Oh, well, if things were in order and there was peace and there were all of these things, then this is this is going to be a thousand years where Jesus rules and reigns, and things are going to be. They believe that the relationship between animals and people will be different. The relationship between, like, it's going I'm to be a thousand ruling. years of of good, but the, like, but there will still be. People are getting their heads cut off. That's not good. been sold huh. out to Jesus. And when Satan is released, he's going to come and gather those individuals who still, under the rule and reign of Jesus Christ during that thousand years, no have still rule. not submitted and given themselves over. And the devil's going to so by his own words, all of these people he missed, who still have not committed. There are unsaved to people They're going to try to come against the city of God and where Jesus sits on the throne. They're going to try. To, to come together and battle and it's not even a battle again fire comes down God evaporates them and uh, it says that the devil who deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever and then he sees the white throne and him who sat on it uh, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away everybody was running from him there was found no place for them. He saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. Now, um, you'll read this. The sea gave up their dead and who were in it. There's the idea that whoever died in the past, all who have lived and died, will be brought to judgment. Now, some of the discussion is that those who were, uh, put their faith in Jesus, they will not meet the judgment unto salvation. They have been saved. They have been washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Their sins have been forgiven. However, there will be an accounting of how you spent your time. How you spent your time. You were saved. Now what? What did you do after that? And this is absolutely You're going right. to have to answer for that. You're going to have to account uh, for your time. Well, I gave my life to Jesus at 17 and then for 50 years... I just lived a good, safe life. I didn't evangelize. I didn't tell Did anybody about Did he say 50 Jesus. or 15? You're saved. You know him. But you essentially, I don't want to say wasted because there's some value and beauty. I, I'm, I'm trying to use my words well without making people feel bad uh, because we live in a sensitive generation. But it's like once you're saved, your, your life just is. It, it just starts. Like now put your faith in Jesus now what now it's this beautiful adventure where you've got the creator of all things and the Holy Spirit dwelling in you and you're being led and guided and God's taking you in these places and these adventures and every place that your feet touch you have an opportunity to be a light in a dark place but most of us aren't living life after salvation as an adventure in partnership with God seeing what he can do in us and through us Many of us are just serving God, hoping that he will help us overcome our bills or help us get into a relationship. Like our focus isn't about serving him. It's like, what can God do for me? I gave my life to Jesus. Now you should change my life. But God's not just here to change your life. He's here to change you and to do something in you and to do something through you. But that partnership is many times skewed because the view that we have of God is like, he's a genie. Oh, I'll give my life to Jesus. So in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19, it says, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. To live your best life here on earth. You can be saved and not live a life that's filled with blessings. You look at the disciples and a lot of people in other countries who give their lives to Jesus and it becomes an adventure. And they're losing their lives for the name of Jesus, not living their best lives now because their eyes aren't focused on here and now. Their focus is on eternity and the day of judgment when they have to account for the time, that, that how they spend the time that they were allotted. And they're going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. I saved you and you 
didn't chase after just earthly fame and success and things and just a spouse and you didn't settle for less you walked with me and you realized what was important and you stayed focused and you didn't fall off track and you weren't deceived by the lust of the flesh and the, the desires for earthly fame and success and riches and wealth and oh man I could go on and on about this because many times we're short-sighted we lose track we think that God is a genie we give our lives to him with the hopes that he'll change our situation but he's more concerned about changing you than your circumstances but all right, so this guy's completely ignorant. Just let, just to clear it up, so you, there's going to be one account, and that is, are you saved or are you not saved? That's it. There's nothing more than that. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Come on now. It's so good. You guys fired up? Is anybody else fired up? If, if you're here and you're just like, I'm sweating. I, I know you can't see it, but uh, if, you, if, you, if you guys are here, man, put that in the comment section. I'm fired up. I'm fired up, and I'm ready to rock. What's Monday got in front of us? Let's go. Thank you guys for having me, uh, United City. Have a blast. So grateful to be there. I'm fired up. There we go. We got Cloud Corona's fired up. Uh, Nate X. I can't even say that one. It's fired up. I like it. Fired up. There we go. I'm fired up. Let's attack Monday. Whatever, whatever, whatever is waiting on the other side of this Bible study, uh, I would say look out. What Bible we got study? Some people who are fired up. We're focused. We're ready to rock and roll. Uh, if you could, as we leave, and I'm about to pray, now if you could tell me in one word how you're feeling, and maybe you didn't change, maybe you came in here sad and you're leaving sad, uh, maybe you came in tired or confused or exhausted, and you feel the exact same way, I, that, that's okay, because my job isn't to <coughs> change the sky is not. or your emotions, hey, my job is heck to with what the Bible says. tools necessary. And this is ridiculous, and you got one deceiver after another. Uh, you know, he puts Revelation 20 and, I don't know, Second Kings 10. Uh, well, I don't know, I'm not sure what he could be referring to. The guy is hugely popular. He reminds me of, oh, what's that thing that we saw years ago? on Saturday Night Live. This guy right here, Matt Foley. Motivation speaker. And that's what this guy reminds me of. He's motivating people. And um, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Hey, <laughs> that's not a Bible study, man. That's not a Bible study. So let's do a quick Bible study on Revelation 20. All right. So in Revelation 20, verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a chain, and a great chain in his hand. So in order to understand the context of what we're reading here, it's very, 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 very important that we understand Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Alright, that's important to understand. It's not just to read it, but to understand that this revelation of Jesus Christ that we're reading here in the book of Revelation is going to be angels showing John things which must shortly come to pass. And he's shown it to John, but these things that John's describing are for us. Okay, to show unto his servants 
which is us, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Re excuse me, Revelation 20. And I saw an angel. You remember what we just read there? Don't forget about that. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. And I, John, saw an angel. He able to make the connection there? I mean, that's very important. It really is. So, an angel shows John. And I, John, saw an angel. So, here, an angel is going to show us, the servants, things which must shortly come to pass. And I saw an angel. I, John, saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottom was put in a great chain was in his hand or in his hand he and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and satan about him a thousand years so this is a, a verse i like to use if there's ever any confusion about the devil and satan are they two different things no it's one thing the serpent and the dragon is one thing dragon serpent devil satan same thing not different things same thing it's real simple all right and of course the dragon, serpent, devil, Satan is all a spirit that is absent of God. It's not a God at all. As so many people try to teach today, it's no God. It's a spirit of no God. There's only one God, and it's the God of heaven, and it's our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, and, I, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. Alright, so the obviously the devil was deceiving the nations and now he is not deceiving the nations. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. There's only one way to understand this. Alright, and that is before Jesus came along, there was one nation of God. Alright? Outside of that nation of God were the nations deceived. Alright, now here comes Jesus, and he now makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in God him all right so in Matthew 21 verse 43 he says therefore I say unto you the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof so there was one nation of God the children of Israel and now here comes Jesus and he breaks down those barriers if you will and makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. The nation of God now are the nation of believers born of the Spirit of God. Alright, so now Satan is bound because he has no nation of people all to his own. Right? Now keep that in mind. We'll, I'll touch on that again here in a second. Verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Now, again, if you had read Revelation chapter 1, you would have seen that it says, Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. And what do we read here? And I saw thrones. We are kings unto God. And his father we are the ones that are sitting on thrones right now and judgment was given unto them right now judgment has already been given to us right now we are sealed we are saved we are secured we are sanctified forever right now nothing can ever take that away Judgment has been given to us right now. Jesus says, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never 
die. Believest thou this? So right now the judgment of God has already been given to us. Nothing can ever take that away. We are kings and priests unto God right now. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received the mark in their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Right now, I mean, we just go back to, if you read the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you read about people getting their heads cut off and at, and that happens after Jesus ascends to heaven as well it's, it might happen today and it might happen again tomorrow who knows but the context of what we're reading here is this is happening during this thousand year period and we are living in this thousand year period where these things are happening and we do we don't worship the beast but those that are not saved do it's pretty simple really but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished this is the first resurrection Again, let me just, you know, this is so goofy. And this is why I point out that all these people are teaching a zombie doctrine. Because in order for their doctrine to work, the people that are beheaded have to be alive. All right. It doesn't work that way. You have to have a head to be living. There is not a thousand year period of people running around with their heads cut off. That's nonsense, man. That's movies, Hollywood movie stuff. That's not happening. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now there should be really no doubt about this. I mean, who who has laid down their life and rose from the dead and ascended to heaven? There's only one person, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. There shouldn't be any dispute about this, but it's, it's just insane. The kind of world that we're living in, where people are just utterly confused about this. And, and, you know, and understandably so, really, because there are so many deceivers in the world today. It's incredible, really. And again, that's something what the Bible teaches us. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived and we see that happening every single day and it's getting worse it's not getting better it's getting worse now in 1 Corinthians 15 we get a clear understanding that Jesus Christ is the first resurrection for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. That's it, folks. I mean, you, what do you think? You're the first resurrection? No. That would make you God Almighty, and believe me, you're not God. Jesus Christ has led the way for us. He has died, defeated death, rose back to life, and ascended to heaven. And we're gonna, we that are His, we can, we're gonna follow Him. We're gonna follow Him by going into the grave and then raising back to life and ascending to heaven on the last day at His coming. Oh, oh I thought that was one more man. Crying out loud. All right. Okay. Anyway, so that should be crystal clear. Jesus is the first resurrection. If that's not good enough, let's keep reading. Oops. Let's keep reading in Revelation 20. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. See, we are partakers of his 
resurrection. Right? So when we're born of the Spirit of God, we are partakers of His resurrection. We abide in Him, and He abides in us. On such, the second death has no power. Now, let's read that again. Blessed and holy is He that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. Remember what I just read in John chapter 11? I mean, there's numerous verses I could point to, but I, I want to make this simple and clear and easy for you all to understand. In verse 26, And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Right? The second death has no power over us. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? All right, so right now... We're, the second death has no power over us that are born of God. We are partakers of the first resurrection. We are partakers of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has led the way for us and we will follow him where he has gone and meet him in the clouds at his coming. Just like we read all, really all throughout the New Testament, uh, this is you know explained over and over said many different ways right and uh, it should be crystal clear right when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven the angels will gather us together to meet the Lord in the air all right and th this really goes back to uh, Genesis from Genesis to Revelation the same things being taught over and 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 over verse 6 but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years right now we are priests of God and of Christ let's go back to the beginning in Exodus 19 God says to Moses and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nations these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Right, Mr. Noisy's back. Mm -hmm. Joy riding today, no doubt. And then in 1 Peter chapter 2, says, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Right now we are kings and priests unto God. So in Revelation 20 when we read, And they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Right now we are priests of God and of Christ. Right now we are a royal priesthood right now. There should be no doubt about it. How can you rightly say that you are saved if Jesus Christ is not reigning in your life right now? It's insanity. Now, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. This is very easy to understand. Okay, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the angels gather us together and we are lifted up in the air. Now, who's left on earth? I'll give you two seconds to think about it. All right, so the people left on the earth are going to be all the unsaved people. All right? I mean, it's very obvious. Who's going to be left? The unsaved people are on are left on the earth. Okay, we can go to the parable of the wheat and the tares in Matthew 13. And we can read about how the harvest is the end of of the world all right what happens at the end of the world the wheat is gathered into his barn into the Lord's barn which is up in the air all right first Corinthians 15 Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming all right for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet so we're up in the air our enemies are at our feet. Our enemies are the unsaved people. All right. 
And so the wheat are gathered into his barn, and the tares are gathered at our feet. And they are put in bundles to be burned. All right, and bind them in bundles to burn them. And what do we read in Revelation 20? And fire comes down from God and burns them. All right, very obvious stuff. I mean, it, we're reading the same thing over and over and over and over again and again and again and again all throughout the Bible. All right, so when Satan is loosed, that's when he has control over all the unsaved people that are still on the earth. See, right, we're up in the air when this happens. And uh, I'll give you another example, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. All right, first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Just like we read in Matthew 24, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and the angels gather together the elect. This is all the same thing. All right, and so when we're up in the air, our enemy is at our feet. All right, and this is, again, uh, all throughout the Bible. Let's just kind of go hit a few examples here in Genesis 3, verse 15. The Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Jesus is going to stomp on the head of the serpent at the end of the world. It's exactly what we're reading here in Revelation 20 when fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. Again in Psalm 110, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Again in 1 Corinthians 15, we read, For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. And again, I mean this is not all the examples, but just a few. In Revelation 3 verse 9, it says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. I'm sorry. Yeah, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. They're going to be at our feet. We're going to be up in the air, and our enemy is going to be at our feet. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Alright, so when we're up in the air, then Satan is loose. So he's got total control over all the people of the earth because they're all unsaved. And so what's he do? And he goes out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea, and they went upon the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about. So they're gonna be we're gonna be up in the air and they're gonna be compassing us about, but down on the ground. And the beloved city. Alright, they're gonna campus the camp. I'm sorry, they're gonna compass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. See our city is above. Right? Our city is above. It's not on earth. It is above. And this is, again, referenced all throughout the Bible, really. Galatians 4, verse 26. Jerusalem, which is above, is free and is the mother of us all. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up into the air. All right. And then the, we read in... Uh, Revelation 21 that the city of God comes down from heaven and onto a new earth. All right? all right, very simple stuff, really, very simple. All right, and so uh, that that's that should be crystal clear. It really should be. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. All right, so there's no more unsaved people living for a thousand years. That's insanity, man. You got you got that idea by watching a Hollywood movie, and you believed it. You know, just like you watched uh, Click, Adam Sandler movies, and you believed that's God. That's how God operates. No, that's not. That's not it. That's not it at all. Stop watching those movies and start reading your Bible. All right, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, which is the end of the world, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, there should be no doubt about that, no dispute whatsoever. 
For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. This is when we're changed, transformed into our glorified bodies. We are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air, and our enemy is gathered at our feet, and Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evilness forever. Okay, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. There is no more death after this moment. All right, it's it. That's it. It's over. Therefore, there cannot be any more saved people after this moment after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and before we're set back down on the earth there the the existence of unsaved people is no more there are no more chances to get saved when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's too late I mean you think about Matthew 24 verse 30 and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn because they know deep down deep down that it's the end of the world man it's judgment day they know it deep down we'll read a parallel verse here in Luke 21 it's speaking of the same moment in time and it says men's hearts failing them for fear because they know it's the end of the world. They know this is it. There are no more opportunities for them. They know deep down that the judgment of God is upon us. And uh, I'll be doing a study on Matthew, on the book of Matthew, with a very dear friend of mine, and we're going to go over this. And I'm going to we're going to talk about this. How when Jesus was born. And you know how King Herod, he sends uh, these people out to go witness and to confirm that the Savior of the world is born. And when they come back and tell them, you would think, wow, that's fantastic, right? No. No, when they, when they confirmed to Herod, not just Herod, but all Jerusalem with him was troubled. Why were they troubled? Because this was confirmation that the Word of God is true. And they themselves know that they are evil and wicked people. And they know the judgment of God is upon them. Right? And so also, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, People are going to know. They're just going to know. They don't even have to be told all these things. They're just going to inherently know that it's over for them. It's how God has built us. God has built us with these uh, pre-programmed things that we just know. Uh, and, you know, in the past I've used the cat as an example. You have a little baby kitty and you have a litter box without even showing that little kitty he's gonna know to get into the litter box and to you know do his business he just knows it's instinct so also when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's just gonna be instinct because that's how God has programmed us it's the end of the world and they're gonna mourn they're gonna yell out they're gonna be, the people's hearts are gonna give out on them it's gonna be a very terrible time for the unsaved people because they know that there is no more opportunity to be saved they know it's the end of the world so anybody that's teaching a thousand year period after the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is a liar an outright liar and just like this guy here, he's big on the devil is a liar, the devil is a liar. Everybody come on, say it with me, the devil is a liar. And then what's he do? He repeats the words 
of the devil and ignores the words of God. All right, now real quickly here, the devil that deceived him was cast into the lake of fire where the beast and false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now we read in Revelation 19, the beast and the false prophet are thrown into the lake of fire. This is the same moment of time. This is just letting you know this is the same moment in time. It's utterly ridiculous to suggest this is a different end of the world and a different judgment of God. That's just stupid. It's the same thing. It's the same moment of time. We're getting a new vision that is being explained to us by John. That's all that is. I mean, I've seen people just get stupid and then double down on stupid and even more stupid and try to suggest that Jesus Christ comes three, four, five times. Jesus comes 20 sometimes. But it, if... <laughs> You had faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands. You ought to be able to see that there's only one end of the world. There's only one return of our Lord Jesus Christ. That should be very simple to see, very simple to understand. It really should be. It's not going to happen 500 times. It's going to happen one time, and then that's it. All right. All right. and uh, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it and whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them again this is a parallel to what we read in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it gives a description here of how the sun is darkened the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken this is a parallel it's just a visual of the same exact thing. All we have to do is be able to connect the dots. All right. Of course, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is judgment day, and that's what we're the description that we're being given here in verses 12 through 15. All right. So, and the judgment of God is is very simple. It's are you saved? Are you not saved? All right. So Jesus, because he is pure. And because he is in us, despite of all of our dirtiness, if you will, we're pure in the eyes of God. Because Jesus is that pure. He is pure, pure, beyond pure. His pureness washes away all our filth. All right? And so, I mean, that's it. Right there. If you don't have Jesus, you're, you're not saved. You know, we think about, well, you got to do good works. Well, what are you going to do that's going to impress God? I mean, come on. God has made the heavens and the earth. I mean, he's done so much. And you think he's going to be impressed by something that you did? I mean, that's ridiculous. In John chapter 15, Jesus very clearly states that he is the vine and we are the branches he that abideth me and I in him the same brings forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing so it's not any good thing that we do it's not uh, it's not us man it's him working in us and the idea that we're we got to be good people or we're doing good stuff no it's God it's because God is good all right so that's that's basically a death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death okay so those that are not saved they're cast into the lake of fire that's the second death somebody asked me the other day what's the second death well this is it it's a judgment day and when it's the end of the world and that's it and if you're not saved you're cast in the lake of fire that's the second death all right and that's you know very clear you're very clear very simple so anyways uh, hopefully uh, there might be somebody out there that has something to gain you know this is pure insanity right here what this guy's teaching and he doesn't even know what he's teaching a thousand year zombies people run around with their heads cut off All right. he's a great motivational speaker no question about that you know good-looking guy with young guy with tattoos I mean, you can understand why he's so popular. But in today's world, 
Do you really want to be popular? Yeah, think about that. If you're that popular, you might be on the wrong side of things, huh? You might be on the wrong side of things. Just think about that.